Welcome to Retromania! I've gathered 10 retro design cars that each took inspiration from the past. But is retro design a cheap passing fad? Or is it here to stay? We'll take a quick look at each of these cars and find out. And you'll never guess which one has less than 5,000 original miles on the odometer. Oh, and as a bonus, cats! What's not to love? Welcome to Retro Cars Forever. My name is Brad and we're going super retro today with this colorful collection of retro design cars. This is a subgenre of vehicles that I define as a modern age automobile that took direct inspiration from designs of decades past. It's like a remake of a movie, but better, usually. And while some of these retro design cars are ferocious, most of them are cute as kittens. So it's fitting that we're meeting here at the Cat Cafe Lounge in Los Angeles. Well, the cars are out in the parking lot. The cats are in here. The Cat Cafe Lounge is an awesome non-profit cat adoption center, but more on these guys later. As for the cars, let's take a look around, meet the owners, and see what Retromania is all about. My name's Adam Hove, and this is my 2013 Fiat 500 Abarth. The Abarth was inspired by the mid-60s Abarth 695. My car has the 1.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder that makes about 160 horsepower, but it feels a lot stronger than that, and it makes a great noise. It's really nimble, it loves to be hurled around. Everything about this car is hilarious. It doesn't take itself seriously and you can't take yourself seriously while driving it in the best way possible. My name is Harag Yazidjan and this is a 1994 Dodge Viper. In the late 80s and early 90s, Dodge had a partnership with Carroll Shelby. My name's Carroll Shelby and performance is my business. And he was brought on as a special consultant. So this was supposed to be modeled after Shelby's AC Cobra and it's just a badass hot rod, drop top, side pipes. Honestly, my favorite design detail on this car is the side pipe exhaust. I have a love-hate relationship with it. A lot of people get things called, they say, snake bites, which essentially is just burning your ankle on the pipe. And for me, I was like, oh, that's nothing. These guys are just newbies. They don't know what they're doing. And I went and I was parked and I was gonna go get some food, wearing some shorts, and lo and behold, burned the hell out of my ankle. And now I have a scar to this day. So, side pipe. So the driving experience with a car like this is pretty damn fun. You don't have an airbag, you don't have traction control, you don't have ABS brakes, but I respect this car. It's a car that I've been dreaming about and wanting since I was a kid, you know. At some point I wanted to own a Viper and I think that's like a bucket list thing. And I love every second I'm in this car. I'm Ashley and this is my 1994 Mazda Miata. Mazda Miata was inspired by the old 60s British cars, all the fun roadsters. Mazda improved a lot on the reliability and also an easier to find parts for as well. This is my fifth Miata. Mazda's motto is Jinba Intai, which is a horse and rider as one, so I feel like this car really embodies that motto. My favorite design detail of this car has to be its like bubbly, fun appearance. I feel like I would do roadster enthusiasts and ingest it if I didn't say the pop-up headlights. <laughs> So how did retro design cars become such a part of the automotive landscape? I'd argue it wouldn't have happened without baby boomers. This mega generation was nearing their earnings peak by the late 1980s, and automakers went to work capturing a slice of their income. Sports cars like the Dodge Viper and Mazda Miata were early attempts to cash in on boomer nostalgia. But the retro design movement truly caught fire in the late 90s, when Volkswagen's new Beetle flowered once again. VW's reinvention of a classic was a massive hit not only with boomers, but with anyone looking for something fun, colorful, and different. A few years later, there was the one-two punch of the reimagined Mini Cooper and the super successful Chrysler PT Cruiser. Retro was in, and it wasn't long before just about every automaker had a retro design in their portfolio. So let's check out the car that made this trend what it is today. 
Hi, I'm Monique and I have a 2004 Volkswagen Beetle. My first car was a Volkswagen Bug. It was a 1972 and yes, I bought it quite used, <laughs> but it's very much that classic look. Well, the biggest difference is that the engine is no longer in the back. It's now in the front, but the inside feels very much the same. I have to admit that I am a sucker for the flower vase. They're flowers from my garden and they get to go with me everywhere. Every time I get in it and go someplace, I'm having a good time. Just driving it makes me smile. I'm Chris Hoffman. This is my 4,800 mile first month of production 2001 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Chrysler designers kind of modeled this after um, 1930s panel vans. They put a lot of space into a relatively small car, so when you look at the inside, it feels like it's bigger than the outside. There's a Dodge Neon under this car, and so it drives a lot like a Dodge Neon. The narrow fenders it makes the car have an enormous turning circle. It's not terribly quick, but it's fine. Why does your car only have 4,800 miles? <laughs> Like, tell me the reasoning by kind of like, I'm going to get it, I'm not going to drive it, I'm just going to kind of, you know, cherish it. When this car was new, um, it was in huge demand. People today might forget that because of where it went. The idea was it was going to be a cheap car, starting at like $16,000, and dealers were marking them up by five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. One of the dealers couldn't mark it up, it was against their corporate policy, so instead, they had raffles. And you put your name in a bowl, and they pulled names out, and you had the chance to buy it below sticker. So just on a whim, I threw my name in the bowl. And they called me the next morning and said, hey, we drew your name. Do you want to come pick out one of the five PT Cruisers we just got? So I went down there that night and, like this one, it was the best equipment and color that they had and drove it home. And I thought I would drive it for the summer and sell it at a profit at the end or at least break even. But I really ended up liking it. And since I liked the design and thought it might be significant years, years later, at the end of the summer, I decided to put it away and make my own barn car. I take it out every six to eight weeks for exercise just to keep things lubricated and going and back it goes. So it's never been washed, it's never been wet, and uh, here it is. Hi, I'm Margot Cross. I'm Jimmy Cross. And we brought our 2002 Jaguar S-Type. This Jag is based on the Jaguar S-Type from the 60s, actually. My favorite design detail is, of course, the hood ornament. I love the hood ornament. That's, Ooh. that's a Jag right love, there. Yeah. Because I go to industry events, he wanted me to have something a little nicer to drive up in. He deserves it. Well, and he says I always deserve something a little nicer. And this came to us by chance. It was in impeccable condition, had about 40,000 miles on it, so it was a baby. We got a great deal on it, and we went for it. It is smooth. Smooth. This car feels good when feels you're in like it. It feels like you're gliding on air. But like you feel classy. James Bond. I love it. <laughs> Speaking of cats, let me tell you more about the Cat Cafe Lounge that's hosting us here today. This is an awesome place to hang out with dozens of cats, which are all available for adoption. There's plenty of space that includes a relaxed inside area, as well as a new outside catio. Since they've been open, this nonprofit has saved over 400 felines. If you'd like to donate to the cause or stop by for a visit, be sure to check them out in the link below. And now, back to the cars. Hi, my name is Jeff Claver, and this is my 2001 Plymouth Prowler. So they wanted to make it look retro, but they wanted to have modern technology in it. So they looked at the Ford Dodge Roadsters in the 30s, and they made this. When you drive it, you can watch the fenders turn and the wheels turn. You can see the suspension articulate. You're looking right at it. And the chassis is actually better than the drivetrain. It's a Chrysler 3.5 liter V6. They were expecting this thing to be some drag racing monster. It was really made for looks and to cruise, but it's fun. I like driving it. People wave. When you go to a gas station, they talk to you. I get that a current design, a teardrop, is the most aerodynamic, but it's boring. This has some character. I don't know if they'll ever build anything like this again. I brought a car today as well, although technically it belongs to my better half. So let's hear from her instead. My name's Athena and this is my 2002 Ford Thunderbird. My Thunderbird is almost a line for line tribute to the classic. Some of the obvious elements that are carried over are the portal, the fabulous grill, and the hood scoop. 
My favorite design detail is the color, which you normally don't get to see when you're driving your own vehicle, but in this car, you get to see it. It matches the outside on the inside. The driving experience in this car is like rolling down the road on a beautiful bright colored couch. And when I'm driving, I never feel like I can be in a rush because it's just so joyous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> My name is Joff Ambao and I drive a 2000 Honda S2000. Honda's S600 and S800 are uh, definitely strong influences on this car's design. Its proportions, which I think are the most important thing in car design, draw a direct line from those cars. So I'm talking about the long hood, the short deck, and the big dash to axle ratio. The reason I bought the S2000 was because I really wanted a convertible, and since it was gonna be a daily driver, it had to be both reliable and affordable. What I really love about this car is how visceral it is compared to other modern cars. Certainly the suspension doesn't filter out uh, much of the road feel. You have an open air experience, and of course the engine is super, super high revving, which is lots and lots of fun. It's pop-up quiz time. Which of these two cars shared the same platform? If you think you know the answer, leave a comment down below and I'll tell you if you're right. Bonus points if you can tell me the name of the shared platform. Good luck. My name is Mitch Brayman and my car is a 1991 Nissan Figaro. There's always a nod to the past. This is my big break. <laughs> they only made 20,000 of these cars total, and they were only sold new in Japan. It's pretty much inspired by the Italian cars of the mid to late 50s, the Bianchina, the, some of the Fiats, especially with the center roll down top where the roof goes into the trunk compartment. But it is actually a 998cc four cylinder engine with a turbo. As I like to say, it has four squirrels and a rubber band. Even though it goes, it doesn't go real fast. It, really wasn't designed to do that. It's not a car for somebody who is introverted. I do have a little bit of social anxiety and this car can really get you over it. I get people smiling, I get people asking me what it is. My favorite design detail about the car is the designers of the Figaro came up with this really stylized fleur-de-lis design from the dash to the emblems. They committed to every aspect of it. So looking at these retro designs makes me wonder, is there a future for cars to look back at the past? Every so often, if it's done right, retro design can be really, really cool. The new Bronco and the new Defender are perfect examples of when they really try to nail retro design. I know there's been a lot of flack for the new Nissan 400Z, but if you can incorporate those old school, classic, beautiful designs that captivated the people's attention the first time, you will definitely be able to channel that and help with your sales. And I think that part is cool because you can buy the history. Bring it back. Oh, I love the way the cars look back then, the designs, everything. It looked like there was so much detail to everything. It was like almost like art. Every car today seems to have the giant grill and the same dashboard and the same steering wheel. So I'd rather see retro than that. Every time you see a car on the street that has a little bit of a retro design, doesn't it always get your attention? Isn't it more fun than just a basic box? As for my opinion on this trend, I think classic cars are beautiful and charming, but they can break down a lot, they can struggle to keep up with modern traffic, and if you get in a crash, yeah, you might be going home in several small Tupperware containers. But retro designs can capture that classic spirit while still being modern enough to safely and easily drive every day. So with retro design cars, you can have your cake and eat it too. Hey, are you eating crumbs in my car? Uh... That's our show. You've heard from us, but now we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite retro design car? Do you think this is a trend that should continue into the future? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thanks to the Cat Cafe Lounge for hosting and to all the owners for showing us their cool cars. And thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more Retro Cars Forever coming to you soon. All right, you cool cats. We'll see you next time.